Ooh, now you get to go read the sentence from the book. Yay. Okay, so um da da tami no machi yo. Sorry. I probably should have a square here. Any idea how this might be read? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh it's ishi tarami no michi yo hadashi de fumuto yukata ni futta ame no se de Suberi ya sukata. So the first clause say the pave the pave road the stone pave road hadashi de is a slip right? Or That's a good step guess. On. Um, hadashi is barefoot. Barefoot. This is this is this is <laughs> this is why I like verb that have kanji on it, so I can at least remember what it I means. I know. Yep. Ha. I agree. Hadashi de is so hard because it's a noun with de added to it. I I I've looked at I've I've made the same mistake. I think is that a verb? Oh, Hadashi. Hadashi. Hadashi had the uh, she character. Yeah, no, I know that she is so confusing. <laughs> So it's hadashi de um fumuto. So I've I stepped barefooted onto the stone paved road. Hi. And immediately you cut you got the knee. Uh the immediate part would be down here if we were translated that way. It's subiri yakata. Oh, okay. So it's subiri yakata. I I I slipped. Close. But it, then, he's actually just saying it's very slippery, basically. It's easy to slip. Or it's easy to slide, probably, in this context. So I step onto the road, and it's very easy to slide. He can, as soon as he steps, he's like, hmm, I could slide on this. <laughs> and then the next part is yeah. the seide, which is kind of stuck in here in the middle. So this one is, you got, you got the ni futa ame no seide. Because the rain... Because it rained in the late night. Yes, exactly. So um, you got that isn't it, really that yes. late. So, but so basically, right now in the book, it's super late at night. You got that though is actually the evening or the dusk time. So that is basically when the sun is setting and there's still light in the sky. So the sun could be like gone, but you know, there's still like that light over in the corner. That's their dusk time. It's uh, when the sky is like the kind of bluish color like that. That's that's dusk time versus um, right now. It's like dark, dark time. So it's not right. necess- it, 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 it is raining right now, I think. But um, that's not what it's talking about in this story. It just says earlier, as in in the evening, it had rained. So because it had rained in the evening and right now it's late at night, um, the stone path was very slippery. It was I, easy to slide on. And basically, I, he notices that as soon as he steps on it. I have a quick question I, about something tangent. I, um, I just noticed that the the particle in Japanese, like the ga, the o, the ni, the de, they seem to function in, um, like they do a whole lot more lifting in terms of meaning. Yes. As opposed to English, where we have so many words that mm-hmm. we can put onto the sentence to describe the, the situation. But in Japanese, it's just that one particle that basically changes the the, the nuance of the meaning. Definitely. How do you get used to that? How do you shift gear in your brain? <laughs> you, in terms just, of, you just get used to it just, over just reading quantity, many, many... You know? Yeah. <laughs> quantity is, is the way to do it. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> So our, our next word is tsuiteru. Um, a lot of times in Japanese, e's will be dropped from iru. So tsuiteru rather than tsuiteru. Um, literally, this means to stick. But in this context, and it's very commonly will mean this in a lot of contexts, it can mean to be lucky. To be lucky. Tsuiteru, to, to stick. Yeah. A way you can <laughs> so tell weird. the difference is probably what particle these would get. 
Because if you're sticking to something to something, there's probably going to see like an O versus to be lucky. That's more passive, right? Probably right. going to be getting a gas. Um, I see. So how, what particle would I add if I want to say I'm lucky? Ore ga suiteru. Ore ga suiteru. Hai. Do you know what this kanji oh. is? I just realized something. I had the image of me being sticky, so it's like everywhere I go, the thing that I want just kind of exactly. gets suck onto me, like a magnet. All, all That's the nice, why they meant sticky. Stuff. Money sticks to you. Hai. Right. Kind of that meaning. I get it. So, so. Um, Sorry. This is te. Yes, te. And um, can you read this word? Is te saki. Nice, te saki. So te saki has two meanings. Both of these meanings do show up in the book, which is a little bit confusing. So you'll be seeing this word a lot. The first meaning, as in the meaning we're going to be seeing today, means fingertips. Finger slash fingertips. That's because saki kind of so means like the tip of something. Uh, it's like one yes. of those many meanings. So your fingers, tips. So your finger, fingertips. The second meaning is minion. Minions. So, because your minions, you. yeah, exactly. So it's a metaphor in that case, because they're my fingertips, says the man and the 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 lord or whatever that bosses people around. They're like I his see. fingers. So you will see both of those in this story, but the story, this context we're going to be seeing it today is just his fingers. Um, I... Next is kiyo. Yo means use. And I don't know what key means, but it shows up in the word for weapon. <laughs> Didn't take a look at that. But kyo together right. means skillful. Kyo. I didn't I see the the kanji ki in like like utensil, like Probably. forks and things. That sounds right. What is the fork? I don't know what that is on top of it. Like utensils. Shoki? Is that shoki. Shoki. Yeah, like... oh, I'm right. Shoki. Sh shoki. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So I guess it it had the meaning of um tool objects tools yes kind of like a tool like word makes sense I think it's in do not in dog oh, huh. a lot of words like bu buki as in weapon yes buki like weapon. bu as in budo budo as uh, in no it's it's, a, it's the the key part buki of buki in... it's the key right. part of buki right but yeah kiyo means um. Skillful or useful, but skillful in this context. I have a sentence for you to read for me. Tell me what you think it means. It's dorobo wa te saki ga kiyoda. Hi. It means being skillful with the tips of the finger, the thief. The thief yes. is very skillful with his hands. Exactly. That's exactly what, is... what it means. Yep. Perfect. Right. Yep. And just a random note, kyo is a na adjective rather than a noun. The adjective. Okay. Sudi is our next word. Sudi is normally I... written in katakana. Um, it does have kanji, but it's it's a lot of times you'll see it in katakana. Um, it means um pickpocket. Hi. I guess it's such a dirty word that <laughs> it doesn't even get the kanji. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you know what this word is? It's it's the sun character, so it's, it's Nichi. Character. It can mean Nichi. Nichi is how it's read when it's married to certain things. For example, Nichi Yobi is Sunday. Do you know how it's read on its own? If you just see this kanji, on its own, it's heat. Yep, heat. Perfect. Okay. Can you tell me what you think this means? Tesaki ga kiyo na suri. Um, ace. Um, so the, his hands is good at stealing. That's a good guess, but suri is actually just the word pickpocket. So you could pickpocket. say doing good at doing that. You probably have suri suru. You'd have to turn this into a um, a verb, suri suru. But pickpocket is more like a noun, like thief, we saw in the last pedicure. This is actually a thief that is skillful oh. with his fingers. So I keep this thinking is it's a noun. Relative clause. I keep thinking it's a verb. Hi. Suri. Yep. 
That, you you no, have to add sudo to it. Sudo. Then it turns into a verb. So sudi sudo would be um, doing pickpocketing. Can you read this I... word for me? Sono hi. Hi. So sono is a way to say that. So what do you think sono hi means? That day. On exactly. that day. On that day. Sono hi. Um, what does the sentence mean? Sono hi wa suite night. I mean, I was not lucky on that day. Exactly. Perfect. So our next particle is mo. Mo is basically the exact same as the word also in English, except for the fact that it will replace a particle, which is a little bit confusing. It replaces the ga particle, the wa particle, and the o particle. It does not replace the ni particle. Um, that's not like something you actually needed to know that it doesn't replace the ni particle, but I just wanted to bring that up. Um, but it literally just adds the word also. For example, um, could you read the sentence for me? Do you know what hono yomu means? Hono yonda. Read a book. Exactly. So this says, Khan read a book. The magician also read a book. So all you did was add mo to what is the same between the two sentences. You can also not have two sentences and have mo like in this one, where it says, Khan wa madoseki mo game mo skida, which is Khan loves games. Also, he loves um, magical stones. So you could have toll here, but they decide in the sentence they wanted to use also with mo. Hmm. So oh, if you have two sentences and there's something the same, the mo is going to be replacing that. So that's basically the same as adding also after the word. So the magician also read the book or Khan read book. Uh, sorry, I'll do the next sentence on here. Um, Khan read the book. Khan also read the blackboard. So the whatever is different between the two sentences is what gets the also added to it. Right. So hi. Uh, da -da. So now you get to go read a sentence from our thing. Hesaki ga kiyo na suri no ore mo. Sono hi wa suite nakata. So the first part said, um, um, he's a good, the thief was very skillful with his hands. Yes. I, then, a thief who's super skillful with my fans, uh, also, no ore, to the night. Can I, can you help me remember what's ore? Oh, ore, oh, I, ore I. is I. Yep. Yes. Um, no ore, I. Mo, I'm also skillful thieves with my hands, and on that day I was not lucky. Yep. So in a way, this mo is almost giving off an even-like idea. Um, it's basically literally it's saying also I, who was a thief that was soup, I mean a pickpocket that was really skillful with my hands, also was not lucky that day. So you're just saying that, but. <laughs> It almost gives off an even like, like even I, who was a super skillful sleep, wasn't lucky that day. Um, so it gives off a little bit of an even feeling, but it is literally also. So I wasn't lucky that day as well, because even though I was super, um, I was a super thief. <laughs> Hi. Um, next word, harapeko. Have you heard this word before? Harapeko da. Hara is... Is um stomach. Yep. Peko. Peko. It kind of means like empty, I guess. It's like a sound effect of um sound effect. Yeah. Hare peko means hungry. Hungry. It it's more in a starving like way. So onaka suita is I'm hungry. Hare peko da. It's more like I'm starving. Right. So um with um onaka suita is literally my stomach is empty and 
peckle is kind of like my stomach is making a peckle noise. It's kind of Hi. what that is. A um, growling sound. Yeah. Uh, can you read the sentence for me? Ore wa hara peko da. What does that mean? I mean my I'm hungry. Like, I am hungry. Here's our next word. What does this mean? Well, that's not bad. It's not supposed to be up there. Taberu. Hi. What does taberu mean? The normal word for eating. Yep, it is to eat. And it is finally our first do verb, I feel like you've seen in a long time. Not an uber pretending to be a do verb. So uh, our next kanji is to remember how do we say this kanji? Taberu. Hi, hi, taberu. And our next word after that is mono. Mono, if you see it like this, is probably going to mean thing. It can mean person, just in case you ever like see that. Um, these actually have different kanji, but a lot of times mono will be written without kanji. But for Hi. our purposes, just know that it means thing. Um, so uh, I'm gonna. I did that wrong. Um, so tabe mono is a word that means food, <laughs> but that's Hi. not what I wanted to write here. There's a lot of mono in Japanese, isn't it? Oh, yes. Like, mono shows up a lot. Kimono, a thing that you wear. Yep. Right? Yeah, exactly. And then uh, monogatari is a story, story. right? Yep. The thing that you tell. Mm-hmm. Hi. Hi. So now, I now I have something for you to read. This one has a relative clause in it. Hi. Um, taberu mono. This one is literally a thing to eat, taberu mono. A, a thing to eat. Versus tabe mono, which is food. Which is actually the tabe mono word is literally the an example of the thing I've told you about compound verbs of getting the stem form of the verb tabe and adding a noun or an adjective mono. or a verb, which is thing. Um right. so th this exists in case you want to make a longer sentence. So tabe mono is just food. Well tabe du mono tells us we have a clause that could be longer describing the food. I see. Do you have any guess um, how this might be read? It's yumeshi. Yeah, yumeshi. Um, do you remember kind of what you meant? You is like the character moon? Mm, probably, I believe you. It, it, so... Normally, tsuki is what I think of for moon, which is a little bit different than that but that, that that could definitely mean moon as like a radical <laughs> so it yeah it just mean like, yeah it, um, it's basically evening something. yeah dusk evening. exactly meshi means food so you meshi is the same as ban gohan it is the evening meal or dinner i see you meshi. can you read this sentence for me Yumeshi ni taberu mono. The evening mean? food. Kind of. That'd be yume, yumeshi no tabe mono would be the evening food. This would be worded a little bit differently, but that is like the idea behind the sentence. Could you try rearranging this a little bit differently in English? Hi. At the evening meal. The f the f the edible food. Yeah. So a lot of times it's easier. <laughs> the food at the evening meal. Yeah. This is something, <laughs> something, eating at evening. Something to eat at evening. Something I will eat in the evening. In other words, so something to eat in the evening. You meshi ni taberu mono. So something to eat in the evening. <laughs> um. Here is a do ver an u verb. Not a new verb. A new verb. Looks like a new verb, but it's u. Um, do you know what hairu means? Hairu. To go in. Yes, to go in. Perfect. So now your job is to remember that this can be read as hai, hairu. Hai. Um, so negative form, specifically for u verbs. Um, nusumu, which is to steal. All you do is you delete that u and add a nai. So nusumu becomes nusu ma nai. What does hairu turn into to make the negative form? Hairu, hairu, hairu. 
It's an ooh verb. Yeah. Ah, hi, hi, ta, hi. I'm sorry. No, hi, nai, nai. Um. Wait. It needs to turn into an ah sound. Hi. So ha. So hi. So let's start with nusumu. Nusumu. As nusu plus m. And with an ooh sound. So it's. So we delete that ooh. We add an ah. And nai. Nusumanai. Yes. So now we have haidu, haidu, which is hai r plus u. What do we do? Okay, so it's hairanai. Yep, hairanai. That means not entering. Hairanai. I know why I'm so messed up because I keep seeing that root at the end. And I know. My brain keep thinking, drop the root. Yep, that's. The hardest thing about Japanese is those fake new verbs. <laughs> but in this case, what I need to do is split the R sound out of that ru yes. and add the ah to it. Yep. Hi. Can you read this for me? Te ni hairu. Yes, te ni hairu. To take into hairu. hand. Take into hand. Yep, it is to... um. Get something. It is now mine. Um, can you read this for me? Maberu mono o te ni hairu. I take the food into my hand. Um, I take the food. So um the teni hairu or teni iru uh is a verb that basically doesn't really mean to take into your hand. It means that like metaphorically. So when we say that. It's because it means like you get something. It is now mine. Like, like kind of like Hirota. <laughs> it's like, so this oh. means I get something to eat. Something to I, eat. I get something to eat. Okay, so that te is completely metaphorical. Yes. Got it. Um, uh, in possession, basically. It doesn't mean taken to hand. It's I possess. Yes, I possess. Um, so haidu, remember, is that u verb. So r plus u. How do you put that into nai form again? Hairanai. Hai, hairanai. Perfect. And you don't know this uh, yet, but what is the te form of wabishi, you know? Waba, wabishiku. Yep. Yeah, Isn't wabishiku. it? Te. <laughs> Um, a lot of times this te will be dropped um depending on like where it is in a sentence and stuff but literally the te there is a te, te there but a lot of times it's dropped for thing but yeah wabishi well, we <laughs> okay so this te for this for the wabishi is when you needed to list multiple uh, um, adjectives no. if you're listing multiple adjectives you don't have the te so wabishi and then wabishi right? <laughs> I don't get the kide so why do we need to add the te behind the ku? Well, sometimes you need to have literally te form for something. This is more useful when we get to verbs that end with e. So this right here, the nai, the e gets dropped, and we get kute. So what does it say? Hairanai kute. Yep. Hairanakute. Hairanakute. Yep. So. Boom, that, that coup, we get the te there as well, because we need it actually fully in te form rather than having te dropped. And I can't think of on top of my hand when normal adjectives to get keep that te. Um, I'm sure there are parts, probably when we do the sentence form of it, the sentence te form, um, nice. which is has a soul meaning. So this is a different way to say and in Japanese. So last week, we saw the generic way to say and, and I didn't tell you how to make it. I just was like, that's generic. We're skipping that. So this week, we're actually talking about how to make a specific kind of and. This te is basically the same as soul in English. Like, I didn't get any food, so I was hungry. It, you could say and here, but it feels a little bit boring, right? I didn't get any food, and I was hungry. Like, it's just kind of... It's plain, right? We're not really insinuating anything. With te, we're insinuating that these two actions are related. 
how related is this tet with the to earlier in so, terms of to is a hundred percent law of the universe is how i think of this to. well te is more just like a generic is, is like a way that I say and and have it a little bit so like so it's really the if you would use so in english in this way you would use te you wouldn't use to to mean so i was hungry that would be i didn't get any food which made me hungry <laughs> right it like to is more aggressive I see. Like I, I describe it as the law of the universe is what happens when toll happens. Versus te is just kind of like, oh yeah, I was hungry because of that. So right here, I did replace the toll and made it to um ga futte, michi ga subere yasui yo, which is if I'm talking to somebody, I'd be like, oh, um, it rained, so the the path is um slippery, you know. But that's kind of how. See. You couldn't really use to in that sentence because that sentence was very like casual, right? If I was like, the raid fell, then it became like, it, it's kind of dramatic to say it in right. a kind of way. So that's when you'd use the te. It's a little bit more talky like, I right. guess. The talky like version of to. Um, and this is actually where we're going to stop. So next week, we'll retouch on this and. Um, I... and this is actually really perfect because I was like worried we weren't going to have time because that's how many slides I made. I was like, okay, we didn't have time for these two parts of the work. <laughs> no, I think the grammar point today was kind of difficult. Yeah, a lot of. Um, so, yes, we sort of ran out of time. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, that's where we'll be stopping for today. I'll stop the recording.